actually cannot even believe how amazing so many of you have been. The Good Morning Good Life planner has been so successful. It's been amazing to see how many of you have them at home, on your desks, in your morning routines, in your daily life. We actually sold out of it twice and had to restock. Just a Amazing. Thank you so much for your ongoing support of the planner. Just so you know, if you haven't heard of it yet, it's all at gatlu.store. That's G A T L U W dot store. Go check it out if you haven't seen it already. This is a limited edition version. It is a 16 monther. It goes all the way through 2021, through the end of your 2020 even. So lots of good stuff in there. And I show you everything that matters to me in a morning routine, like your movement, your mindfulness, your mastery. So you can check those off every day, plan your goals. We've got the whole thing in there. So definitely go check it out at gatlu.store if you have not already. It is the perfect partner to your morning routine. Check it out. She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I need to get emotional. Oh my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Detail Therapy. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the details around overachievement. How do you feel when you hear that word when someone says, you're an overachiever? Is it positive? Is it negative? I want to talk about what you need to know when someone says it to you, whether you wear it as a badge of honor or it sounds awful. If you're new here, my name is Amy Landino and I will be your host. I'm a success coach and founder of Gatlu House, a resource dedicated to helping you go after the life you want. You can see all of our work, including the show notes for this podcast by visiting detailtherapy.com online. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad to be speaking with you on this beautiful November day. It is a great time to remind you that the end of the year is near. We're talking about two months left in this awful year of 2020. Let's just be honest. A lot of good things. Hashtag grateful goodbye 2020, right? A lot of crazy things, a lot of great things, but the 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 weirdness definitely overshadowed the great, and, <laughs> right? Because it was kind of hard to have a fun conversation with anybody. <laughs> First of all, because we couldn't see anyone. Second of all, <laughs> I mean, most of us, I, I don't know. Everyone's situation is different, but to stay safe, we had to stay hunkered down. And that could be really difficult for a lot of people not having personal contact, trying to figure out how to balance this new work from home situation. Productivity is in a different space. Maybe you have to teach your children even though they have a teacher, but that teacher is on a computer screen and that makes everything different. It's been a weird year and it's not over yet. We're still trying. We know we're going to have a A lot of stuff we got to deal with still in early next year, but I want you to feel like you are at least doing your best to find the silver lining. Find all the lessons that you are learning and take them to a better place for your future. It's not always about new year, new you, right? How well did that work for us in 2020? (laughs) We were all so excited about this big new decade. And here it is, everyone. So it's just a testament to the fact that you can't put all your weight in just these little things that you feel like are tangible and you can grab onto. You've got to remember that it's about you, the actions you take, the ethics that you stand for, the legacy of you and your family and where you're trying to go and just trying to do a little bit better every day to make that happen. That's all we can ask for. So listen, I'm here for you. I know it's been a little crazy this year, but you got this. We're going to finish it out strong. And I want to have a conversation today that popped into my mind and really inspired me. I just knew this was something you and I had to talk about. Are you an overachiever? 
you know what I mean? Someone has said this to you at one point in time, or maybe you felt it about yourself, or maybe you took a quiz and the classification that you were given was overachiever. And you know how you feel about it, whether you are one, whether you're not one, whether you aspire to be, whether you find it disdainful. Are you an overachiever? What do you think when you hear those syllables, that word, when somebody looks at you and go, oh my gosh, you're such an overachiever? Is it a positive feeling? Is it a negative feeling? I can speak from my own experience. I don't look at the word overachiever and feel not good about it personally. I actually feel pretty motivated by it because if someone is saying to me that I'm an overachiever, first of all, over can make it sound kind of bad, right? Like it's too much. But if someone else is saying it to me, it is their interpretation that it is over the top of achievement And I must be just getting things done, right? So that's been my feelings about it. I had this epiphany last week and I really thought I got to go to detail therapy about this because I think it could be super interesting to hear, you know, what do you feel about that word? Because it may have a lot to do with why you're here, the majority of the people that I tend to work with or have really gleaned a lot of insight from my content and and have implemented it into their lives are those who identify in a positive vein to the word overachievement. What does that mean about them? I personally think, and if you're listening to this, this could be you. There's a strong possibility you're listening to this and this isn't you, but as I think about who I speak to on a regular basis, there's a strong chance you're listening and you're going, yeah, you know, I actually strive for it. I don't always know if I hit it. I definitely have heard someone call me that multiple times. That could be somebody else. Um, I, I feel a sense of ownership and pride when somebody says, you overachiever, you. And I think that's because we are always looking for more. You are here because you like to be motivated, that you like a little bit of self-development, just a bite size, just something you can execute today, just a little detail to help you move forward. And so maybe a part of you also likes to hear overachiever because it's something that you wouldn't mind being called. And I want you to just take a step back from that and really own it. I don't want you to read into it. I don't want you to feel bad about it. I don't want you to give it anything more than what it has to be for you. I think it's simply an opportunity to really identify why you feel driven. What's connected to your positive feelings about that label? Or what's connected to when somebody would say that to you? Why does that feel good to you? Why does it feel bad? Any of those things. I think it's an opportunity for self-awareness. And the good news is that it may not be overachievement at all. It may not be over the top at all. Just simply taking a couple of ideas, getting started, taking the small steps, waking up early. I want you to think about that. I want you to imagine you're having a conversation with somebody who does not love the idea of you waking up early. They could be your significant other or they could be somebody completely outside of your house, barely an acquaintance, loves to party late into the night or something. I don't know, just completely against mornings. Just imagine somebody that's like, forget that. And you say to them, you know, I've really been thinking, I read this book, it kind of motivated me, and I, I really think I could eke out like an extra 30, 40, 50 minutes from my day if I moved it from either sleeping too long or watching Netflix too late and waking up a little bit earlier and just trying to hack A couple of ways to make that happen, whether it's a different alarm clock or just removing my cell phone from my bedroom, just I'm going to try a couple things, give it a shot and uh, wake up about an hour earlier, see what I think. And then someone looks at you, that person I told you to envision, who's just like, what alien from outer space? What are you saying? 
And they say like, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you why would you even think that that's a good idea? What I could never do that. I am not a morning person. They may also say that sounds like some overachiever stuff. Again, look at what we're saying here. That label is connected to outside perception of you, whether you like it that way or whether you don't like it that way. Some people are actually going to like hearing they're an overachiever, but at the same time have salt of the entire conversation in their mouth because the person who called it to them or to you also was hating on your self-development plan of waking up earlier. So you see where I'm going with this. It is possible to own that title and to be okay with it and actually kind of smile if you hear someone say it to you. If you disconnect from it and you remove the deeper meaning of it and just allow it to be a description of someone else's perception of you. Now, you can also go in a negative direction with that. Sometimes we get too obsessed with what other people are thinking about us and therefore might work too hard and actually overdo it and actually over, over, overdo it. And that's where we have to remember the balance. That's where we have to remember what's right for us. When are we doing it for us? And when are we doing it because we want everyone else to see it? I asked a question on my Instagram recently, like, hey, shout out to you, raise your hand if you don't post pictures of your morning routine very often because it's in the dark. And there were so many people that said, yeah, my morning routine's in the dark. It's not this beautiful perception that everyone puts out there of wake up and look at me how cute I am in my cream cardigan and my warm, warm coffee, smiling brightly with perfect makeup. Like that's not real life. I'm sitting in the dark at five o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting in the dark at eight o'clock in the morning these days <laughs> because it's winter. So remember that it is perception. There is balance with that. If you are being called an overachiever and it's because you're doing something, a small step that is much bigger to someone else, but you're not doing it for the likes, you're not doing it for the accolades or the, or the credit or the talking point. I hate talking points. Ugh. You're doing it because you actually f- are fulfilled by what happens when you do it. And in that moment, if you are an overachiever because of that, wear that with a badge of honor. Sport it. Pimp it. That to me is sexy. It does become too much of an overachiever if if we really are worried about you and your bandwidth and whether or not you have taken time for yourself or rehabilitated. You know what I mean? Just take a beat. Are you overachieving because you haven't stopped for yourself. So if, if you can ask yourself that, if you can ask yourself, you know, have I taken time for me? You guys know I'm obsessed with the Daily Stoic. Recent recent passage in the Daily Stoic was, you know, philosophy is something that we are making time for because we deeply care about who we are as individuals and and how we present ourselves and always working toward being better, not being perfect. Sometimes we're going to screw it up, but always working toward the potential of being better. If that's the case, then we can't just squeak a page in from the Daily Stoic in the five minutes that our, our eyelids are dropping before we fall asleep. Do you start your day with that intention or do you just try to sneak it in there at the end. We have to make the time to read. We have to make the time to wake up a little earlier and feel our own feels. We have to make this time because it is that time you are dedicated to doing you, to being you, to taking care of you so that all that other stuff that's going to get labeled by the rest of the world, whether you like it or not, is going to happen and you can be there and be resilient. Here, how did this come up? This is a this is um probably where your head's at like, "Oh, what is this? What is this conversation around overachievement?" Well, I believe that what we do in this community is very much high achievement. If you look around and you cannot find 
Remember Jim Rohn, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you look around at your core five, whether they are digital people or they are real life people, whether they know you, whether they don't know you, but you're paying attention to them. If you look at those five and you see people who would not understand waking up earlier with intention just so you can feel your own feels and read a little philosophy and just try to be a better version of yourself than you were yesterday. Or someone who wants you to go to happy hour. It doesn't matter what you say, what your plans are, what your diet is, what anything. You have to go to happy hour with me. You have to help me find my husband. Uh, You know, like remember the friends dragging you to the bar because they're convinced they're going to find their husbands at the bar. Come on. You're not going to find your husband at the bar. Promise. Uh, You're going to meet him through a friend or through really, really amazing people. So just keep that in mind. However, is it that friend that's like, you've got to go to happy hour? It is an obligation that... Is that friend not picking it up? When you remember that these other people around you are not exactly where you want to be, it doesn't mean you don't like them. It doesn't mean we don't have love for them. It doesn't mean that we haven't had great times with them and that we still want them to play the role in your life that makes sense for you. They are there. But if you look around and there's more people who are not in the direction you're going in than there are who are, that is what I'm talking about with you automatically getting classified as an overachiever and therefore being the high performer or at least the potential for high performance in your ecosystem. I also want you to stop because of what I just said and and really just please give yourself a pat on the back. I'm not even going to tell you why yet. I want you to do it now because you deserve it. Because so many of the people I talk to are convinced they don't deserve the overachiever title. They don't deserve to say they're high performing yet. You are. If you care more about politics, the news, scrolling social media, and the latest gossip between family and friends, and it's the easiest thing to talk about, and you haven't made... You... you are so much more than all of those things, even by giving it a conscious thought, even by surrounding yourself with somebody like me in your earbuds. You need to give yourself that credit. There is no point when somebody says, you've reached it. You have reached high performer status. Congratulations to you. It's again, perception. I want you to feel that perception in yourself. You know how we write in visualization, you're supposed to write in present tense, not who you hope to be someday, not who you wish would come and show up in your life someday. That is the case today. You are a high performer today. This isn't the secret. This is real. You are listening to this show. You care. You've made it to this point in the show. I don't even know what minute mark it is, but it's far enough. You may be multitasking. I don't know what you're doing. It's probably productive. Is it taking care of your kids, cooking dinner on the treadmill, checking emails, thinking that that's a productive thing can be challenging because you have to do both. You have to educate yourself and you have to check some emails. Maybe you should check the emails at a different time. But I know what you're doing is something you're trying to be productive at because I know you. You are overachieving. But you're overwhelmed. And that's how this conversation started in my head. I realized that if I could really sum up what I am trying to do when I teach you the various random things <laughs> that I do, because I'm all over the map sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm like, hey, go watch this video on how to have a great vi- virtual girls night. We might be quarantined. Who knows? It's a great way to build relationships. Or I might be talking to you about your morning routine, or I might be talking to you about vlogging, or I might be talking to you about business. There's so many things you're interested because you do seek more. You have that internal flame. It drives you. It's powerful enough. It's powerful enough that you will say worse things to yourself than you would ever say to anyone else in real life. Even somebody you don't even like that much, you still would not light them up and be like, honey, you're failing. But that flame can be used for good. And that's what I want for you. And, and I really feel like when you see all my stuff, I'm only trying to help those people like you who probably think of themselves as an overachiever. 
I help overachievers remove the overwhelm so that they can go after the life they want. That's what we do here. Why do we do that? Because you actually don't need to overwhelm yourself to be considered an overachiever by someone else. Can I get an amen on that? Now that we've put that in perspective, you don't. Your level of high performance, that small step you took today, is a small step that hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people won't. They refuse to do. Overachievers are okay with not being perfect, even though sometimes we forget and we're striving for perfection. I could totally go back and edit out the fact that you just heard my calendar remind me that I only have 10 minutes left until my next appointment, but I'm not going to do that because I am sharing my feelings right now. I was not happy that happened, but at the same time, you know that I respect my time and I know that you know that you need more people who respect their own time. Fun fact there, just threw through <laughs> a little improv there. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to talk to you about this because if you are reading into someone calling you an overachiever and you feel negative about it, put it, put it in perspective. If you are listening to this because you saw the title and you were like, yes, honey, that is me. I am an overachiever been there, done that, happy to do it, wearing it as if it were my name tag. Congratulations. You are self-aware. And that means that you can start to do this disconnect and that you can do these things that are important to you and balance out when somebody has to call you something just to make sense of it. This happens all day long with a million other labels to hundreds of millions of people. Certainly anyone who has put themselves in the line of public scrutiny and social media, but a lot of those who haven't too. We all have someone in our lives who likes to call us something or categorize us somehow or just rationalize why they think Whatever we're doing or thinking is a little cray cray. Think about all the people who were crazy when they were around. Because it's so convenient now to look at them and go, oh, they are so incredible. They were a trailblazer. They changed the world. At the time, they were probably being labeled with whatever anyone could think of so that those people could feel better about themselves. I am here to tell you that I support you, you freaking overachiever. I support you. And because other people are going to call you that, own it, step into it, feel good about it, And let's remove the overwhelm. Your morning routine doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a couple of minutes. Your career doesn't have to be what everybody online is doing. It just needs to fulfill you. Your amount of time that you watch television is completely up to you if you live for it and it brings you joy. When you feel the feels, do you actually feel them? Do you notice them? Do you know what makes you feel good? Do you know what makes you go, this is a descriptor, this is a feature, this is a benefit of the life I want. I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't have it at all. I'm going to act like I already have it because there are things I should be grateful for in my life because I wouldn't want them to go away. Even as I continue to develop, I will continue to season and shape what this life will look like. But what do I have now? What am I doing now that is helping me see that I'm already going after the life I want? I'm already doing it. Think about that, you little overachiever, you. And tell me what you think about it. Head over on Instagram at Details Podcast. Comment on my latest post. I would love your feedback on, is this word a trigger for you? And if it is, 
Is it positive or negative? And let's unpack that a little bit. Don't forget, if you haven't already gotten your hands on the Good Morning Good Life Planner, the limited edition 16-month 2020-2021 planner is available for sale still at gatlu.store. Check it out, G-A-T. L U W dot store. If you want a little helper, your new companion for kicking off that morning routine strong. I know the overachievers out there probably already got one, but I thought I'd mention it just in case. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Cheers.